everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting ahead of Sun and Fun 2019, and obviously this is in Florida. We are uh, near Colorado Springs. I'm with Charlie Snyder of My Go Flight, and uh, we're flying My Go Flight's new sky display HUD unit. Probably seen it at some of the other shows. Charlie's in the process of getting it certified, and so it can be installed in airplanes like the Sirius we're flying. Basically. What a HUD is, is a small projector that projects essentially a video screen onto a clear screen called a combiner. And Charlie, we've been flying around with this, and basically what this system is doing is it's projecting all of the flight data onto the combiner so you don't have to put your head down to look at the glass display. So let's describe what the system consists of. And I'll show a little B-roll here. This is the projector and this is the uh, combiner of the screen. How's all this work? So the way it works, Paul, is uh, number one, we have to get the data. And so we collect the Air Inc. 429 and the serial data from the certified panel so that we're using the exact same information that you'd see heads down, heads up. And that way we're using indicated airspeed, we're using uh, pressure altitude, all the pitch and roll information that you would otherwise see if you were looking head down. It's the exact same data. So that's the number one thing. And then once we've captured that data, then we have to format it in a way that's useful to a pilot in a HUD format. In a HUD format, it's very different than a heads down format. In a HUD, we can only use two colors, green and magenta, because they're the only two colors that are visible in the light. And then secondly, every pixel has to have a purpose or it shouldn't be on there because it would otherwise block something. So you go through a process of trying to weigh all that out, looking at HUD literature about what people, people have done before, and essentially we've recreated the capability of a transport category HUD software into our software. Now this one is set up um, Read the data from, uh, this is an earlier series, we've got a pair of Garmin GNS430s in here, and we've got the original Avidyne Integra, so it's it's uh, processing all that data and projecting. So the screen I'm looking at, I see all the symbology, and we'll show that in a minute, and it's near infinity, but not infinity. Correct. And why is that in this airplane? Because it, it has to, you have to make a few compromises to get a unit that's affordable and that can fit into the space of a small aircraft. And so the optics are such that it can achieve near infinity, it requires a slight amount of focus, uh, refocusing from a far distance to the image, but not a lot and very comfortable. And as I think you can attest, it's a non-issue. And it's been a non-issue for any of our test pilots, including the FAA. Now the advantage of a HUD is that you're looking at all the flight data, you've got airspeed on the left, you've got the altitude on the right, you've got heading, you got all the various rates, and you got a, a, a path indicator. We'll talk about that. And but you're looking through that out to what's outside the airplane, so you can see traffic, and uh, you can see weather, you can see whatever you need to see. So you're not concentrating with your head down. Now, in this particular case, uh, it's very difficult to photograph this. Roughly what I'm looking at, you're going to see a little bit of a prop flatter there, but it's very difficult between the turbulence and the camera's inability to see what I'm seeing. So because it's so difficult to see, what you're looking at now is a computer regeneration of the flight we just took. So let's talk about some of this symbology on the uh, HUD, Charlie. So a lot of the symbology will be uh, familiar, airspeed tapes, all of the markings on airspeed tapes are the same, altitude tape, we have bug values and bug marks, all of that is the same. We have pitch and roll bars and ladders, those are all the same. The Where you'll see something that's different is the ability to add in two new symbols. One is a flight path marker, which tells you where the aircraft is going, and then you have a flight director cue tells you where the systems, the autopilot, has instructed the airplane to go. So when you are hand flying, your job is to put the big green circle on top of the magenta circle. And what makes that easier than command bars, it's three-dimensional space, and it's a larger image than you would see on a PFD. So you can 
move fast it move towards it fast and capture it slow down and not do your normal zigzag that you might do with command bars and we also see um, uh, that horizontal line you see there is the zero pitch line yes and that is the point at which the aircraft pitch is level also you we mentioned the tapes on the left and the right and down at the bottom you see an HSI and the actual heading numbers are repeated both at the top and the uh, bottom of the screen and I found in flying this if you're an actual instrument and you get down towards uh, decision height and or decision altitude and you're still in the cloud you can be looking out so what will happen is that the runway will just sort of materialize through the HUD and at that point you make your visual transition so you don't have to transition from the PFD look up and see if you see anything look back down look back up you just continually look through the HUD until you see the runway or not right and that's a really big deal because you get vertigo, you get uh, your ears uh, get affected when you feel the g-forces of bringing your head down and up on a descent. And also, this means that you will pick it up at exactly the right moment when you see it. So it could be earlier than otherwise, or it could be, okay, I'm not going to see it, it's time to go. So you're not having to add that extra time and the discomfort associated with head up, head down movement. All right, so let's talk about the applications for this. Uh this system, it's around a $25,000 system, you think? Yes. And that's going to be useful in uh, piston airplanes, light twins, uh, light turbines? Yes. Jets, it's, it's light really, jets? Yes. It's, right now, it will be all Part 10, 23 aircraft that fly under Part 91. And last, uh, when do we expect uh, certifications on and approvals? So we're targeting, uh, since the uh, government has come back to work and has put a little bit of a delay in our process, we're hoping uh, sometime in the June, May June time frame. And what airplanes, uh, do you have the full AML by then? Or? Yeah, we will have the full AML by then, uh, which, like right now, we have commitments from uh, people flying Cirrus aircraft, Beechcraft uh, Barons, uh, Cessna, Citation Cessna Mustang, Cirrus Vision Jet, uh, Fort, Cessna 421, a Conquest. So a variety of aircraft have committed to flying with, uh, safer with us. Okay, so uh, we're heading up for Sun and Fun next week. Uh, see this at Sun and Fun, what booth are you in? We are in, uh, I believe, Hangar C, and uh, you'll find us in there somewhere. And we will have the system set up with a simulator, so you can come in, you can fly it, you can ask whatever questions you have about how it works, how it gets installed, and all of that. Okay. All right, thanks for the demo, Charlie. Oh, you're welcome. Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb, a week ahead of Sun and Fun. Thanks for watching.